BenQ latest feature called Paper Color Sync along with the SW321C really transformed the way how we can actually do printing, especially if you have an inkjet printer in-house. The one thing about Paper Color Sync though is that there are some setup that are involved and in this video what I'd like to do is show you how to set that up. This video is going to cover specifically Lightroom and how you get the Paper Color Sync set up with Lightroom. It's a lot easier to do than in Photoshop, however if you use Photoshop I will make another video showing how you get Paper Color Sync to work with Photoshop as well. I'm Art Suan Sang, BenQ Ambassador, let's get started. Before we start, please subscribe if you are new and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated when I upload a new video. When we want to use Paper Color Sync, the first thing that we have to do is make sure that we set the parameters of our display so that it can load the proper paper parameter first before we launch any of our image editing software. In this case, you will notice that I don't have Photoshop or in this case, Lightroom open. So the first thing we're going to do is call up Paper Color Sync. We are faced with a software interface which it will identify the screen that we're using. The next thing we have to do is choose the color space that our photo is in. In this case, mine is in Adobe RGB. I'm going to choose that. Next up is the printer. In this case, Paper Color Sync support two different printer models right now, Canon Pixma Pro 10 and Epson P600. I use Epson. We're going to go with Epson. And lastly, in the Epson printer, it supports two different paper types, Velvet Fine Art and Premium Semi-Gloss Photo Paper. The thing to note is that if you are going to change the paper that you are going to print in this case, you would have to come into Paper Color Sync and pick the other paper type in order for the parameters to be loaded properly. In this case, I'm going to do the demo with Velvet Fine Art Paper. Choose that and then press on Configure. What Paper Color Sync software is doing right now is that it's loading the parameters for that specific paper and printer combination into the display. You will see in a moment here that the white point of the display is going to change from D65, my calibration mode, to D50, as you see here. Press done and you're finished. If you want to come in again and change the paper type, you can simply come in here, change the paper type, and press on configure. I'm going to go ahead and skip this. Now that you have actually configured Paper Color Sync, you can go in and launch Lightroom. Once Lightroom is launched, we are going to use Lightroom Print Module. When in Print Module, the first thing that we want to do is make sure that we specify the printer we are going to use. In this case, I'm going to come down here towards the bottom left of the screen and click on Page Setup. In Page Setup, I am going to choose the Epson printer that I have selected before. In this case, I'm using the P800 series. It uses the same ink set as the P600. However, it can print a wider print format, so I'm going to choose this one for this case. Then, I'm going to choose the paper format right now. In this case, I'm choosing Super B because I'm going to print 13 by 19. If you have another paper size, you can go ahead and specify it here too. But the one main thing you want to do is make sure that you select the proper printer. Press OK and you're fairly set. The next thing that we are going to do now is jump over to the other side of the screen towards the very bottom and we are going to look for the print job panel. In the print job panel, this will give us details that we need to know about our print and what we are doing with it. For instance, there are print resolution, you can leave that as a default 240. In my testing, I have found out that 240 prints actually a little sharper than 300. It probably has to do something with the interpolation, the way how the printer is actually converting those pixels into ink droplets, but 240 looks sharper. Anyway, print sharpening, you can go ahead and leave that at default low. In this case, our paper type, since because we're printing Velvet Fine Art, is going to be matte. If you don't want any sharpening at all, you can come and uncheck that and there won't be any sharpening done. Lastly, color management. This is the important part. So if you have downloaded a profile, you can come and click on others. And what you have to do here is choose the profile that you want to show up in that list so that you can select them to print with. In this case, I already made a custom profile with my Epson P800 Velvet Fine Art. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's checked, which it is. Press OK. Come back in here, under Profile, choose Epson Velvet Fine Art, boom, just like that. Now the next two things I have the option to choose is the rendering intent, and this is how the colors are being scaled. I have the option to choose Perceptual or Relative. The general rule of thumb is that for any landscape shot, if you want velvet colors or to retain the velvet colors, you want to choose Relative. 
for any portrait, it's better to scale everything down and using perceptual is going to look better in that case. From there, you can go ahead and click on printer. This is going to pull out the print dialog and within the print dialog, what you want to make sure happens under print settings is that the print mode, in this case, and the color mode is turned off. Secondly, you want to make sure that you are selecting the proper paper type. In this case, I am using the fine art paper to which the menu is grayed out right now. That's perfectly fine. Part of the reason why is because velvet fine art cannot be used from a sheet feather. It has to be a front feed. So that means you have to come in here and change the paper source to front fine art, fine art paper, and velvet fine art is now available. It's selecting the ink matte black automatically, and from this point I can click on print and the print will come out from the printer. I can then use a D50 light bulb or a D50 light source in this case to compare the print to my display. And this is how you set up paper color sync to do a hardware color proofing on the display to compare it to an Epson printout. A few more things I like to mention here is I'm going to go ahead and cancel this. If you go into the develop module, what you can also do on top of print proofing in paper color sync mode is to do a soft proofing. So you can go ahead and click on soft proofing at the toolbar at the bottom there. At the very top right under the histogram you can choose the profile of the paper. In this case I'm using Epson P800 Velvet Fine Art. And right now what you can then choose is a different rendering intent. You will see that the picture looks slightly different. What you can also do is simulate ink and paper. When you do that, the print will look a little bit dull, but what it's doing is that it's loading all the parameters of the paper in so that it will simulate that on the screen. And again, like I said, there's different rendering intent that you can choose. Comparing this to an actual Epson printout on Velvet Fine Art, this is going to come even closer than what you're seeing in the print module. So this is another granular level of control that you can do within Lightroom to do soft proofing in the hardware paper color sync mode. So that's how you set up paper color sync for proper print proofing on a BenQ SW321C and an Epson printer. In this case, if you have a Canon, the same method will work as well. Just make sure to use a Canon printer when you're actually setting up paper color sync. If you have any questions about this feature, please feel free to leave them in the comment section below. Give this video a like, subscribe to my channel if you're new, and hit on the notification bell so you'll be updated every time I load new videos. And until next time, art is right.